Hello friends, today I'm going to explain the simplex algorithm. So what is the simplex algorithm? The simplex algorithm is a method used in mathematical optimization to solve linear programming problems. So what's linear programming? Linear programming, also called linear optimization, is a method to achieve the best outcome in a mathematical model whose constraints are represented by linear relationships. If that doesn't really make any sense, hopefully an example will make things clear. A factory makes two types of chairs, type A and type B. The factory makes a profit of £20 on chairs of type A and £10 on chairs of type B. Each chair requires 3 metres squared of wood to produce. Type A is a luxury handmade chair and type B is the standard option. This means that 40 man hours are required to produce each chair of type A, whereas a machine is doing most of the work with type B, so only 10 man hours are spent inspecting and finishing each chair. Given that 120 metres squared of wood and 1,000 man hours are available each week, how many of each type of chair should be made per week to maximise the profit? First, let's represent this problem as an objective function and its constraints. We know that the factory makes £20 from each chair of type A and £10 from each chair of type B, so this gives us P equals 20A plus 10B as our objective function. We also know that each chair requires 3 metres squared of wood and we only have 120 metres squared of wood each week to work with, so this gives us 3A plus 3B is less than or equal to 120 but we can simplify this to A plus B is less than or equal to 40. We also know that chairs of type A require 40 hours to produce and chairs of type B require 10 hours to produce. With only 1,000 man hours available each week, this gives us 40A plus 10B is less than or equal to 1,000. Again, we can simplify this to 4A plus B is less than or equal to 100. In addition to these two constraints, we also have non-negativity constraints, that is, A is greater than or equal to zero and B is greater than or equal to zero. This is because we can't make negative amounts of a chair. We're now going to introduce slack variables to each constraint. These cause the inequalities to become equalities, and we can graphically represent them now. But before we do that, we have to add non-negativity constraints to the slack variables also. The original variables from the objective function are referred to as non-basic variables and the slack variables are referred to as basic variables. We can now plot a graph of A against B with A being the horizontal axis and B being the vertical axis. But the horizontal axis is actually the line B equals zero and the vertical axis is actually the line A equals zero. Some rearranging of the first constraint will give us this line here, which occurs when S1 equals 0, and similarly we can rearrange the second constraint to get this line here, which occurs when S2 equals 0. We know that A has to be greater than or equal to 0, so we can rule out everything to the left of the line A equals 0. And similarly, we know that B has to be greater than or equal to 0, so we can rule out everything underneath the line B equals 0. S1 will be less than 0 in any part of this shaded region here, and S2 will be less than 0 in any part of this shaded region here, so we can rule out these two as well. This leaves us with our feasible region, and we know that the optimal solution to the objective function will occur at any one of these four intersection points inside the feasible region. Let's see how the simplex algorithm finds which one of these intersection points is optimal. We start by taking a known point of intersection, that's when a and b are both equal to 0. The value of the objective function here is going to be p equals 20 times 0 plus 10 times 0, which is equal to 0. Now we ask, can we do better by moving along the perimeter? We have two options. Either we keep a equal to 0 and increase b, or we keep b equal to 0 and increase a. The objective function will increase in either case, but we want to choose the direction of fastest increase. If we keep a equal to 0, the objective function has a rate of increase of 10. If we keep b equal to 0, the objective function has a rate of increase of 20. So here, we should keep b equal to 0 and increase a. We continue to increase a until a constraint is violated if we move any further. This happens when we reach point b. Once at point b, we see where we can move. In higher dimensions, we may have more options, but here we just have two. Either we keep S2 equal to 0 or B equal to 0. Again, we should choose the direction of fastest increase. By expressing the objective function in terms of B and S2, we can find the rates of increase of each variable. It turns out here we should keep S2 equal to 0 and increase B, as B is increasing faster. 
we increase B as much as we can without violating any constraints and reach point C. Once reaching point C, we need to evaluate which direction to take. Either of the lines S1 equals 0 and S2 equals 0 are available. With a bit of algebraic manipulation, we can get P in terms of S1 and S2, and we'll find that both gradients are negative. This means moving away from C would result in a decrease in the factory's profit. Thus, we have reached our maximum. So those are the main concepts behind how Simplex works. I'll now show you how we can answer the original question and find the specific values of A and B that optimise the profit P. We start by setting up what's called an initial tableau. In the tableau, there's a column for each variable and a row for each equation. We have three equations, so let's fill in the values for each one of those. From our first constraint, we have 1A plus 1B plus 1S1 is equal to 40. From our second constraint, we have 4A plus 1B plus 1S2 is equal to 100. We can rearrange our objective function from this to this, and then fill the values in the last row. We know that we've reached an optimal solution when there are no negative entries in the last row of the table. Here we have two negative entries. Remember we want to move in the direction where the objective function will increase the quickest. This corresponds to the most negative entry in the last row. We now need to choose what's called a pivot from the column of the most negative entry in the last row. Clearly we have two choices, so how do we choose? We take the constants in the last column and divide them by their corresponding values from the pivot column. For the first constant, 40, this gives us a value of 40 over 1, which is still 40. For the second constant, 100, this gives us a value of 100 over 4, which is 25. Of these ratios, we want to select the smallest non-negative ratio. So obviously we select the second one, 25. We now have our pivot, 4, and we want to divide every entry in its row by the pivot, which results in this row here. We now want to add or subtract multiples of this row from the other rows to make all of the elements in the pivot column except from the pivot equal to zero. First, we will set row one to row one minus row two, which gives this row here. Then we'll set row three to row three plus 20 lots of R2 to give us this row here. The current state of the tableau corresponds to where we were in the graph when we reached point B. You can see there's still a negative entry in the last row, which means we haven't reached our optimal solution yet. So we repeat the process. Take the most negative entry from the last row. Find the smallest non-negative ratio. Select your pivot element. Divide the entire pivot's row by the pivot. Add or subtract multiples of the pivot's row to the other rows to get all of the other elements in the pivot's column equal to zero. There are no longer any negative entries in the final row, and this tells us we've reached our optimal solution. We can disregard the basic variables. The maximized objective function is the constant in the final row, 600. This value occurs when 1b equals 20 and 1a equals 20. In other words, we can maximize the profit by making 20 of each type of chair each week. A quick sanity check will validate this maximum. Fortunately, we had minimal work to do for this problem because it was already in standard form. Well, what standard form, you might ask? The standard form for linear programming is when the objective function is a maximization, all variables have non-negativity constraints, all constraints are inequalities, and all inequalities have the same sign. If a problem involves minimizing an objective function, you can convert it to the standard form by simply saying we want to do the opposite. If a variable x in the constraints doesn't have a non-negativity constraint, simply change it to x1 minus x2 and add x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to zero to the constraints. If an equality constraint exists, simply replace it with two inequalities. Finally, if there are two inequality constraints with differing signs, just negate one of them. And that's how we convert to standard form. To finish, let's look at the analysis of simplex. In the worst case, we'll have n dimensions and n constraints, which would cause there to be big O of 2 to the n vertices, and therefore simplex would run in big O of 2 to the n time. However, in practice, we never really get this many vertices, so the average runtime of simplex is polynomial. That is, big O of n to the k, where k is some integer. 
and that's simplex. Thanks for watching. Wow, look! I'm a computer.